three recent developments have led to the increases in violent Islamic extremism in Africa. The first cycle starts with the 9-11 attacks on the USA in 2001, the war in Afghanistan and eventually the steady attrition of Al-Qaeda. The second cycle starts with the US-led invasion of Iraq in March 2003. This breathed new life into the extremist Islamist violence, leading to the establishment of the Islamic State that now controls large parts of Iraq and Syria. The Arab Spring that started in Tunisia in December 2010 started a third and overlapping cycle. The Arab Spring weakened authoritarian control in many countries but did not facilitate a legitimate and effective replacement. Its most destabilizing episode was the ousting of Muammar Gaddafi in 2011. Tuareg mercenaries, weapons and supplies spread across the Sahel leading to the establishment of the short-lived Islamic State of Azawad in northern Mali. Seven interrelated and somewhat contradictory trends will determine the future of violent political Islamist extremism in Africa. First, the wars in the Arab Peninsula are becoming more deeply internal and sectarian between Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State and between Shia and Sunni. It is the Middle East that will inevitably be most seriously afflicted. Second, the flow of foreigners to the Islamic State includes large numbers from North Africa. Blowback is inevitable, even if by just a handful. A third factor is the role of the Internet and in a globally interconnected world that has turned every country into a potential recruitment pool. Fourth, in the 1990s, Algeria was central to North Africa's jihadist movement. Now, Libya's role as the epicenter of North African jihadism is set to grow. Events in Somalia show that even a failed economy can sustain war for decades. Fifth, violent extremists exploit radicalized societies. Preventing terrorism requires a focus on political radicalism. This requires inclusive and consultative governance practices. But countering violence requires onerous safety measures, detailed intelligence gathering, effective law enforcement, interagency coordination, and, when necessary, the use of force. Seventh, the ready supply of desperately poor people in Africa provides a potentially limitless supply of conflict labor. This enabling environment can be altered most effectively by focusing on relative deprivation and human development. Repressive political systems exacerbate these dynamics. Eventually, good governance in Africa, a respect for institutions, not individuals, and inclusive economic growth is the best defense against radicalization and eventually extreme violence. <laughs>